Khepri is a scarab-faced god in ancient Egyptian religion who represents the rising or morning sun. By extension, he can also represent creation and the renewal of life. Khepri is derived from the Egyptian language verb pr, meaning to develop, come into being, or create. The god was connected to and often depicted as a scarab beetle. Young dung beetles, having been laid as eggs within the dung ball, emerged from it fully formed and thus were considered to have been created from nothingness. Egyptians believed that each day the sun was also reborn or created from nothing. In the same way that the beetle pushes large balls of dung along the ground, Khepri moved the newly born sun across the sky. Khepri was a solar deity and thus connected to the rising sun and the mythical creation of the world. The god and the scarab beetle represent creation and rebirth. There was no cult devoted to Khepri, and he was largely subordinate to the greater sun god R.A. The sun god was however included in the creationist theory of Heliopolis and later Thebes. Often, Khepri and another solar deity, Adam, were seen as aspects of R.A., Khepri was the morning sun, R.A. was the midday sun, and Adam was the sun in the evening. As a deity, Khepri's four main functions were creator, protector, sun god, and the god of resurrection. The central belief surrounding Khepri was the god's ability to renew life, in the same way he restored the sun's existence every morning. Mummified scarab beetles and scarab amulets have been found in pre-dynastic graves, indicating that Khepri was respected early on in the history of ancient Egypt. Khepri was principally depicted as a scarabius sacer scarab beetle, though in some tomb paintings and funerary papyri he is represented as a human male with a scarab as a head, or as a scarab with a male human head emerging from the beetle shell. He is also depicted as a scarab in a solar bark held aloft by none. The scarab amulets that the Egyptians used as jewelry and as seals allude to Khepri and the newborn sun. The beetle carvings became so common that excavators find them throughout the Mediterranean. It is thought that Khepri came into existence in the same manner as a young scarab beetle emerges from its dung ball fully formed. Ancient Egyptians used to think, the beetles expressed the sun's motion by rolling their feces on the sand, which is why the sun god Khepri is associated with this particular species of beetle. Khepri was considered below the sun god R.A. in rank, so no shrine was built for him. Another sun god Adam and Khepri are often considered to be part of R.A. As stated in the Book of the Dead, Khepri was also sometimes believed to be a part of Adam. Khnum or also Romanist Khnimu was one of the earliest known Egyptian deities, originally the god of the source of the Nile. Since the annual flooding of the Nile brought with it silt and clay, and its water brought life to its surroundings, he was thought to be the creator of the bodies of human children, which he made at a potter's wheel, from clay, and placed in their mother's wombs. He was later described as having molded the other deities, and he had the titles Divine Potter and Lord of Created Things from himself. The worship of Khnum centered on two principal riverside sites, Elephantine and Esna, which were regarded as sacred sites. At Elephantine, he was worshipped alongside Satis and Anuket. At Esna, he was worshipped alongside Menhit, Netu, Neith and Hika. Khnum was regarded as the guardian of the source of the Nile River. Khnum has also been related to the deity Min. The temple at Elephantine was dedicated to Khnum, his consort Satis, and their daughter, Anuket. The temple dates back to at least the Middle Kingdom. By the 11th dynasty, Khnum, Satis and Anuket are all attested at Elephantine. During the New Kingdom, finds from the time of Ramesses II show Khnum was still worshipped there. Opposite Elephantine, on the east bank at Aswan, Khnum, Satis and Anuket are shown on a chapel wall dating to the Ptolemaic Kingdom. In Esna, a temple was dedicated to Khnum, Neith and Hika, among other deities. This temple began construction in Ptolemaic times, but most of the surviving parts of the temple were built in Roman times. Khnum is sometimes depicted as a crocodile-headed god. Netuyu and Menhit are Khnum's principal consorts and Hika is his eldest son and successor. Both Khnum and Neith are referred to as creator deities in the texts at Esna. Khnum is sometimes referred to as the father of the fathers and Neith, 
as the mother of the mothers. They later become the parents of R.A., who is also referred to as Knumri. Knum, accompanied by the goddess Hecate, molds I in a relief from the Mamasai birth temple at Dendera Temple Complex, Egypt. The temple of Bait El Wali of Ramesses too contained statues of Knum, Sadis, and Anuket, along with statues of Isis and Horus. In art, Knum was usually depicted as a ram headed man at a potter's wheel, with recently created children's bodies standing on the wheel. He was also shown holding a jar from which flowed a stream of water. Khonsu is the ancient Egyptian god of the moon. His name means traveler, and this may relate to the perceived nightly travel of the moon across the sky. Along with Thoth, he marked the passage of time. Khonsu was instrumental in the creation of new life in all living creatures. At Thebes he formed part of a family triad, the Theban triad, with Mut as his mother and Amun his father. Khonsu's name literally means traveler and therefore reflects the fact that the moon travels across the night sky. He was also referred to by the titles Embracer, Pathfinder, Defender, and Healer, and was thought to watch over those who travel at night. As the god of light in the night, Khonsu was invoked to protect against wild animals and aid with healing. It was said that when Khonsu caused the crescent moon to shine, women conceived, cattle became fertile, and all nostrils and every throat was filled with fresh air. In art, Khonsu is typically depicted as a mummy with the symbol of childhood, a side lock of hair, as well as the manat necklace with crook and flail. He has close links to other divine children such as Horus and Shu. He is sometimes shown wearing an eagle or falcon's head like Horus, with whom he is associated as a protector and healer, adorned with the moon disc and crescent moon. Khonsu is mentioned in the pyramid texts and coffin texts, in which he is depicted in a fierce aspect, but he does not rise to prominence until the New Kingdom, when he is described as the greatest god of the great gods. Most of the construction of the temple complex at Karnak was centered on Khonsu during the Ramesside period. The temple of Khonsu at Karnak is in a relatively good state of preservation, and on one of the walls is depicted a creation myth in which Khonsu is described as the great snake who fertilizes the cosmic egg in the creation of the world. Khonsu's reputation as a healer spread outside Egypt, as steel records how a princess of Becton was instantly cured of an illness upon the arrival of an image of Khonsu. King Ptolemy IV, after he was cured of an illness, called himself beloved of Khonsu who protects his majesty and drives away evil spirits. Locations of Khonsu's cult were Memphis, Hybes, and Edfu. Mott refers to the ancient Egyptian concepts of truth, balance, order, harmony, law, morality, and justice. Maat was also the goddess who personified these concepts and regulated the stars, seasons, and the actions of mortals and the deities who had brought order from chaos at the moment of creation. Her ideological opposite was isfit meaning injustice, chaos, violence, or to do evil. The earliest surviving records indicating that Maat is the norm for nature and society, in this world and the next, were recorded during the Old Kingdom of Egypt, the earliest substantial surviving examples being found in the pyramid texts of Unas 2375 BCE and 2345 BCE. Later, when most goddesses were paired with a male aspect, her masculine counterpart was Thoth, as their attributes are similar. In other accounts, Thoth was paired off with Seshet, goddess of writing and measure, who is a lesser-known deity. After her role in creation and continuously preventing the universe from returning to chaos, her primary role in ancient Egyptian religion dealt with the weighing of the heart that took place in the duet. Her feather was the measure that determined whether the souls, considered to reside in the heart, of the departed would reach the paradise of the afterlife successfully. In other versions, Mott was the feather as the personification of truth, justice, and harmony. Pharaohs are often depicted with the emblems of Mott to emphasize their roles in upholding the laws and righteousness. From the 18th dynasty, circa 1550 to 1295 BC, Mott was described as the daughter of R.A., indicating that pharaohs were believed to rule through her authority. Mott was the goddess of harmony, justice, and truth represented as a young woman. 
sometimes she is depicted with wings on each arm or as a woman with an ostrich feather on her head. The meaning of this emblem is uncertain, although the god Shu, who in some myths is Mott's brother, also wears it. Depictions of Mott as a goddess are recorded from as early as the middle of the Old Kingdom, circa 2680 to 2190 BCE. The sun god Are came from the primeval mound of creation only after he set his daughter Mott in place of Isfit, Chaos. Kings inherited the duty to ensure Mott remained in place, and they with Are are said to live on Mott, with Akhenaten 1372-1355 BCE in particular emphasizing the concept to a degree that the king's contemporaries viewed as intolerance and fanaticism. 13. Some kings incorporated Mott into their names, being referred to as Lords of Mott, or Mary Mott, beloved of Mott. Mott had a central role in the ceremony of the weighing of the heart, where the decedent's heart was weighed against her feather. In the Duet, the Egyptian underworld, the hearts of the dead were said to be weighed against her single feather of Mott, symbolically representing the concept of Mott, in the Hall of Two Truths. This is why hearts were left in Egyptian mummies while their other organs were removed as the heart was seen as part of the Egyptian soul. If the heart was found to be lighter or equal in weight to the feather of Mott, the deceased had led a virtuous life and would go on to Aru. Osiris came to be seen as the guardian of the gates of Aru after he became part of the Egyptian pantheon and displaced Anubis in the Ogdoad tradition. A heart which was unworthy was devoured by the goddess Amit and its owner condemned to remain in the duet. The weighing of the heart, as typically pictured on papyrus in the Book of the Dead, or in tomb scenes, shows Anubis overseeing the weighing and Amit seated awaiting the results to consume those who failed. The image contains a balancing scale with an upright heart standing on one side and the shoe feather standing on the other. Other traditions hold that Anubis brought the soul before the posthumous Osiris who performed the weighing. While the heart was weighed the deceased recited the 42 negative confessions as the assessors of Mott looked on. Egyptians were often entombed with funerary texts in order to be well equipped for the afterlife as mandated by ancient Egyptian funerary practices. These often served to guide the deceased through the afterlife, and the most famous one is the Book of the Dead or Papyrus of Ani, known to the ancient Egyptians as the Book of Coming Forth by Day. The lines of these texts are often collectively called the 42 Declarations of Purity. These declarations varied somewhat from tomb to tomb as they were tailored to the individual, and so cannot be considered a canonical definition of Mott. Rather, they appear to express each tomb owner's individual practices in life to please Mott, as well as words of absolution from misdeeds or mistakes made by the tomb owner in life, which could be declared as not having been done and through the power of the written word, wipe particular misdeed from the afterlife record of the deceased. Many of the lines are similar, however, and paint a very unified picture of Mott. The doctrine of Mott is represented in the declarations to Reptimurti Fent Mott and the 42 negative confessions listed in the Papyrus of Ani.